story, Goodbye Golly Mountain, but before they did, they came out against mountaintop removal. But before they did that, they were finding ways to let people get connect, love Earth as a lover versus Earth as a mother. And because they're lesbians, and lesbian people that are outside what is defined as a Christian norm for a person, people struggle to be able to self-identify. And when you know that somebody's had to walk a fire of love to be able to clarify who they are because of the religion and stuff and the culture they're raised in, you got people who understand love and can transform, use love to transform. And that community reaches each other through that mechanism. And fun, and the arts, and just the total irrationality of marrying the earth every year somewhere, be it in Finland and water or snow in here or in central Appalachia with a whole bunch of radical kids marrying the central Appalachia. With, I got the greatest in-laws in the world. <laughs> 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 you know, you get graced and blessed. <laughs> because, you know, because America really has this weird attitude around sexuality that I don't even know how to begin to talk about. It's just like really weird thing. So, so what they have done for me is to help approach from that sense of the science through love because that root has grown up in a crevice next to a tree root and or a rock. And in a really, really dry time, that root is going to ask that tree for a drink. Or if it's next to a rock, it's going to draw it from the rock, long-term water. Um, but if it's tapping it from trees, trees are kind of like the tide under the ground for water, like the moon is the tide for the oceans and other water bodies. Mm -hmm. So it keeps things circulating. And off, and it pulls 80% of its mass from the air. So it's cleaning the air for us and turning all those nasties into something that can be touched. Mm -hmm. It's The woods is totally powered by the sun. So it's solar powered, energy friendly, and gives us good air and water. M mountains globally give the earth 80% of its potable, tasteful, living, drinking waters. And temperate rainforests of central Appalachia, it's 100% of our waters. And our, these, so these are the water manufacturers, if you want to think of them as yeah. such with lots of other things going on because ginseng is an energizer and an enhancer. So when I'm hearing about the cannabinoid things that also strengthen and energize components of your body, ginseng is one, and I think there's two others that people talk to me about. But all of these different kinds of layers of value work in solidarity with each other. They've worked out in the spring, I come to life because there's no tree canopy. I lay it down and under the, you know, when there's more shade, other things take a turn at life. So there's a symbioticness going on here, it seems to me. And our industrial life culture is like, kind of like really messing that up. So if our culture is a cancer, we're gonna die out, folks. The mountains don't need us to live. We need the mountains to live, to have air and water. That the magicians use when they do that, yeah. that same flashy spark. Really? Yes. That is awesome. <laughs> you know, it, it's just really crazy what we, how we've stepped away from using stuff that can be re-replicated without having to create more havoc. Without having to build a machine to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we Please. seek a convenience. That's the evil, because we want things fast and that. Yeah, well, I have a theory that if you look at the Mennonite, the Amish, Quakers, mm -hmm. and I, I know that, and Na some of the Native American and other faiths that do a generational kind of analysis before they accept it. 
then that's the folks you need to get in a room to help you under to help develop the conversation about 20 hour living wage work week with an investment of 20 hours in actual work in your community somewhere doing something that you think will help like take the kids on a walk read a book take so and so you know do some of the things that social we've come to think social service agencies do they step in and do because we're not there to do it mm -hmm. so you know <coughs> so, so so this to me all this is an example that it does happen can happen and culturally it's people that's that's going to be the benching of the de-evolution of consumerism you got to get back to more small community minded you want a fortress like the old time medieval castles which implies serfs and peasants or else that stereotype of it's really really hard work to be a small agricultural person it's only hard work if you're not getting paid a living wage and if you're being if you're being pushed to maximize for 10 instead of 2 if you're not part of the equation of I have a good quality of life also so there's a lot of myths about that small scale farm but there's a lot of truth some of it tribal we said you have to be rural or urban this continent up until 500 years ago was managed mostly by people who lived with seasons and cycles they practiced war they butchered each other and everybody and when the, by God they adopted you they adopted you but they all agreed you lived with the earth you couldn't really own the earth they're creation stories if you want to make your mama happy I'll tell you what to do Slip over the chicken yard Take down a chicken or two We'll sneak around, it's a dark night And those chickens cannot see We'll be sure that the dog is tied up Then we'll sneak up to that tree Take a pole, we'll knock them off Come down flapping like a ghost And if he hollers loudly Just shove him up under your coat I'll bake that chicken pie Put on lots of spice Lord, how I'd like to have this piece of that chicken pie.